Hello and welcome back again to Miss Kelly's Storytime. Today we are reading The Can-Do Thanksgiving by Marion Hess Pomerak. Dee searched Buster's Market for the just right can. Corn? suggested her mother. Little bitty white potatoes? No, said Dee. She pushed her glasses higher on her nose. Peas, she finally announced. Please? Dee proudly plunked her peas on the counter, on the checkout counter. They're for my class's Thanksgiving can-do food drive, she told Priscilla, the cashier. We bring cans and stuff to school, and they get delivered to people who need them somewhere. Then Dee gave Priscilla the 89 pennies, which she'd saved by herself. Where will my peas go? Dee asked her mother as they crossed the street to school. To a hungry person for a nice meal, replied her mom. Where? Dear Dee wanted to ask, but it was time to go inside. In her classroom, Dee placed her peas in a box at the front of the room. Hector plopped in a can of tuna. Keisha added fruit cocktail. Everybody brought something. It's almost time for the pickup, Mrs. Ortiz, Dee's teacher said. Dee's can was about to disappear forever. She ran to her desk and grabbed a yellow sticker. Dee's Peas, Oak Street School, she wrote across it. Dee taped the note onto the can and whispered a secret wish. I want to see where my peas go. Hector heard her. He yelled, No way, pea brain! That evening, Dee and her father made their famous vegetable medley. But Dee still had peas on her mind. Where did my can go? she asked her father. Maybe to a food pantry or a soup kitchen, he said. It'll be helpful. Somewhere. Hector was right. Dee would never know the fate of her peas. But a week later, Mrs. Ortiz had a surprise. A church downtown received her can-do cans, though it's a mystery how they knew where they came from. Dee looked at Hector and grinned. Mrs. Ortiz continued, Now they've invited us to help their volunteers serve and share a Thanksgiving meal at their soup kitchen. On Thursday at noon, I'll take anyone who'd like to go. Hector gasped. Maybe Dee wasn't a pea brain after all. That Thursday, a boy named Tyler walked into the soup kitchen behind his mother. He felt a little shy because he'd never been there before, but his mom wanted him to have a real Thanksgiving meal. Next year, we'll have Thanksgiving in a place of our own, she promised. I know, Tyler said, pushing his glasses higher on his nose. Just then, a group of children rushed by. Tyler noticed a girl who wore glasses like his. She might make a fun friend, he thought. Dee looked around. She saw tables being wiped, floors being swept, people rushing in from the cold. In the kitchen, Dee spotted crisp brown turkeys, a supersized kettle of soup, steaming stuffing, mashed potatoes, cranberry relish, and about a million green beans. There was someone stacking rolls, someone filling gravy boats, someone cutting pies into slices. But Dee didn't see a solitary bee. Welcome, we're so glad you're here, said a lady with a tray. I need helpers for serving. Keisha and Hector were her first volunteers. I need table setter uppers, called a man. Several children shot to his side. And I need a napkin hander outer, came a familiar voice. It was Priscilla from Buster's Market. She was a volunteer, too. Dee walked through the dining room, giving out napkins. The tables were now crowded, and she saw a boy who wore glasses like hers. The boy smiled at Dee. It made her think, he might, he'd be a fun friend, maybe. Emergency! The kitchen door blew open. Keisha ran out, waving her hands. Hector knocked over all the vegetables, she yelled. Kablooey! Dee raced back to help. 
The beans are history, cried Priscilla as she plucked some from Hector's ear. Dee, get me more vegetables, fast, she pointed to the pantry. Dee grabbed corns, cans of co uh, sorry, Dee grabbed cans of carrots, beans, and zucchini. She brushed down an entire row of canned corn into a basket. Then, on the uppermost shelf, Dee saw a yellow sticker glimmering in the light. <gasps> Her peas! Dee stretched, hopped, then jumped. The peas were just too high. She was about to give up when the boy with glasses offered Dee a chair. Hi, I'm Tyler, he said. Thanks, Tyler. I'm Dee. Dee climbed on and reached her peas. Tyler tossed cans of tomatoes into the basket. Dee flung in more cans of peas. Dee! Hurry! Everyone's waiting! Priscilla called from the kitchen. Tyler, where are you? His mom called from the dining room. Yikes! Gotta go! exclaimed Dee and Tyler at the same time, and they ran off in opposite directions. Inside the kitchen, Priscilla looked worried. What can we make with this mismatch of cans, she asked. A vegetable medley, Dee explained. My dad and I make it all the time. Priscilla reached for an enormous pot. Dee whispered something to Priscilla. It was one more secret wish. Definitely, said Priscilla, darting out of the door. When she returned, Tyler was at her side, rolling up his sleeves. Ready, set, cook, he said. Dee and Tyler took turns opening cans and pouring vegetables into the pot. When things got steamy, they took turns wiping fog from their glasses. Soon, only one can remained. Dee poured her peas into the pot. Just right, she said. A few minutes later, Dee and Tyler emerged from the kitchen with a brimming vegetable platter held high between them. Everyone burst into applause. Hooray, cheered Keisha. Marvelous, admired Mrs. Ortiz. Chow time, yelled Hector. Dig in. Please wait, my friends. The room grew quiet and still. An elderly man rose. Let's first give thanks for the blessings of this day, he said. Some people bowed their heads. Some closed their eyes. Some took the hand of their neighbor. Dee smiled at Tyler. He gave her a big thumbs up. They both pushed their glasses higher on their noses. Now can we dig in? asked Hector. And everybody did. 